All right, here we go. Got a little little discussion. Uh, right here we got a uh, pretty good, awesome gasket scraper. It'll also, <laughs> if uh, you get it just right, she'll take off some metal and she'll take off some aluminum for sure. And then, of course, we got the old, you know, painters. I call it the painter scraper, you know, gasket scraper. And then we got, you know, the modern stuff, the, the, the Brillo pads, you know. They got the different colors. I know that. But anyway, we've gotten into a situation now where certain manufacturers will void all warranty if they find any traces of you using this. Some manufacturers won't even allow you to use this. And even worse yet, for certain delicate deemed components, you can't even use that. You got to use the plastic ones, which, uh, you know, <clears throat> them plastic ones, um, I think they're kind of hit and miss on some things, you know. So what, what does all this mean, right? You know, cleaning gaskets. It's, 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 it's gotten to be scientific. You know, you no longer, in the old days, we used to get a, a, a good old file, you know, a good American-made file, and we'd grind it down on the bench grinder, <clears throat> which, by the way, what's what's going on with the bench grinders? You don't see them like you used to, you know, in the shop, you know. Some shops, you got to get an angle grinder, and, and that's how you got to grind things down. Anyway, that's a different a change of the times, I guess, right? But, uh... This this scraper right here is awesome. I like it. it. Does good. But now I've been told even this one's not allowed to be used on certain engine components. This one is definitely on its way out for engine work. Uh, they're trying they're trying to say that when you use this, the uh, fine dust particles contaminate the system, and um, which is kind of funny. I can I, I can actually remember. When I used to work in an open quarry mine, we used to have these big dump trucks. They were called Euclids. E-U-C-L-I-D. Euclid. We had R25, R35s. And they ran Cummins uh, KTA engines, big cylinder, six and three quarter bore. And we ran 12V uh, Detroits, uh, 12 cylinder, twin supercharged Detroit diesels. You know, screaming jimmies. That's, that's what they used to call them. And uh, I can actually tell you more than I've got fingers, times that we actually did end frames in the middle of the mine, pull the liners, put new rod bearings, main bearings, you know, and of course we kept blowing everything and we kept spraying everything down, trying to keep it dust free, and we'd put them together and they'd, they'd run. You know, they'd run, you know, no problems. But today's engines are so sophisticated. Uh, the oil pressure thing, you know, it's gotten crazy. They're so busy trying to lower uh, drag, you know, however you want to word it, you know, drag, coefficient drag, metal drag, whatever, that they've actually lowered, they've lowered the oil pressure so much that uh, any, any deviation in uh, bearing to metal tolerance is just kills these engines these newer engines you know because like i tell you them old jimmies i literally built them in the middle of a quarry an operating quarry you know uh, heads off piston liners put new rod bearings put them together get them running and down you know down the road they went for many 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 years but today's engines you can't do that they're so sensitive you know um i remember in late 80s i think or early 90s chevrolet went to that new 350 where they went ahead and they drilled a relief hole in one of the galleries on the plug and nobody knew that when they first came out and customers would come to the shop and they would tell us hey my oil pressure is too low and then uh you know it'd be around 20 psi and everybody was used to 40 to 50 psi anything that low they'd go crazy but anyway thought i'd share